गुड मॉर्निंग एवरी वन आई गौरव कुमार द्विवेदी वेलकम यू ऑल टू टूडेज जी के क्लास बिफोर गोइंग अहेड विद द क्लास आई रिक्वेस्ट एज वेल एज अर्ज यू टू टेक ऑल द नेसेसरी प्रिकॉशंस फॉर द कोविड नाइन्टीन एज वी ऑल नो दैट वी आर फेसिंग और वी आर गोइंग थ्रू a very pandemic situation that is covid 19 so it is my humble request to take all the necessary precautions take all the necessary responsibilities to stay away from these viruses or from this disease why i am telling you this thing class because as if you are aware of the news headlines so the number of cases in varanasi is increasing very rapidly all right so since the cases are increasing very rapidly and most of us are currently present in varanasi only so i request each and every one to stay safe and take all the necessary precautions okay as we know that without the precautions we will not be able to be healthy and carry out our life activities or the different tasks okay and at the same time i also request each and every one of you to be on time so that you do not miss the classes and thereby please try to understand the efforts which are being taken by your teachers whether it is your science class or the maths or gk please take all the classes to be very seriously so that you do not face difficulties at the end and give your best in these pandemic situations all right so let us start with today's class so today's class we are having the gk for the 8th class students okay as from the next year i hope as per my knowledge your gk subject will not be there or it may be there but i don't think so moving ahead with this this gk subject is beyond the boundaries why do we say this thing because we don't have any limit to this we don't have any fixed syllabus for this because we don't know from where the questions can be asked because it includes maths as well science as well g uh, sorry social as well political science economics and hindi english each and everything gets included in this so that is why we say this is the subject which is beyond boundaries we cannot fix or have a particular syllabus of this gk portion sports activities national events international events economics and various other things which are going on in our country as well as outside the countries they all come under one category that is known as your general knowledge or your general awareness okay now <clears throat> before going ahead with today's syllabus as you all know that gk can be very interesting it becomes boring for many of you okay whether it is boring or whatever it is let me tell you the scenario which you are going to face just after few years okay what the scenario is immediately after your 12th exams whether you are going to pursue your medical engineering iit and all those things after that when you are going to appear for your competitive examinations you will have to appear or give one paper of this general awareness and this paper is considered to be the most difficult paper from my part of view because whether it is the banking sector 
or government sector or the private sector mostly this general awareness is one of the papers in your competitive exams so if you develop a habit from now onwards it will be very easy for you to crack this most difficult part because reasoning quantitative aptitude each and everything english hindi you are studying it okay you are studying this gk as well but your main focus your main concentration is on the main subjects only but don't take this gk to be as your secondary subject take it to be your primary subject only because this is going to help you a lot at your later times let us start with today's class so today's topic is india and the world all right so let us start with this india and the world when we are talking about so you can very easily understand or if you are going through the newspaper or news headlines in your televisions so you must be aware of all the kind of relationship what india is having with other countries all right in spite of helping the other countries with medicines with masks as well as with ppe kits then also india is facing problem due to it because of its neighboring countries as you must have seen that china was also approaching towards us nepal is also trying to create some problem and pakistan is always ready for doing that okay so in in these times that is when india as well as the entire world is itself suffering from this great difficulties when they have they are not able to handle the situations or handling the covid patients is a major task for them in these times also they that is our neighboring countries or the other countries they are trying to take the advantage of this situation and they try to create some problems as well as they are trying to create some pressure on us what i have come to know is that is before this you have already completed the previous pages so we are going to start with this this is your main topic in which you have already done three pages and two pages are left that is your page number 26 and 27 let us start with page number 26 this page number 26 we basically have the neighboring india okay when we are talking about the neighboring india so basically we are talking about all those countries which are just around us which are near to our boundaries and they are some are well wishers some are not the well wishers let us have a look over it as for my knowledge that since you all are studying social studies which includes one of the subjects as geography so you must be much more aware of the neighboring countries of india basically we have five or six neighboring countries or seven uh, that is your nepal bhutan bangladesh sri lanka pakistan and afghanistan all right so since these are the neighboring countries so if we remove or if we forget about all the negative or positive aspects so just like india is a diverse country and and why it is considered to be a tourist spot because just like other places here also we have a lot of beautiful destinations beautiful monuments beautiful temples or marvelous <coughs> things not only to explore but also to learn about since india has a great history and these histories 
are basically seen by the remnants of the previous people which are getting modified from time to time. Let us have a look over them. Starting with the first one, so if you can see here, this is what, this is, I hope you can identify this, try to identify it. If you are not able to do, I am going to help you out here. So this is what, this is the Great Wall of China. If you can see here, basically from three places, the stairs are being going in three directions and if you can see the greenery which is present around this okay so this great wall of china is considered to be a massive structure which is a point of interest from tourist point of view as well as it <coughs> It attracts the visitors as well okay so moving ahead with this we have the second part that is this one if you can identify it well and good if you are not able to identify this is the Dambula cave temple which is situated in Sri Lanka this temple has a lot of statues as you can see here and basically these statues are representing the form of Buddha okay who attained enlightenment now these structures what you can find they are quite specific quite peculiar and they offer great interest as you can see the designs which are present at the top all right so this is one of this is the second one which is situated in sri lanka moving ahead with this now we have this one try to identify it this is what this is the botnath stupa which is situated in Nepal all right which is the neighbor which is one of the neighboring countries of India this Bodhna stupa of Nepal also has a lot of visitors throughout the year just like your Great Wall of China or the Dambula cave okay in the same way this is also famous for its peculiar structure for its massiveness as well as the famous the pointed <coughs> structures just like representing the form of temple okay in this way so all these structures whether we are talking about great wall of china or the dambula cave or the bodhna stupa together or all these structures they have very peculiar things very specific things which not only attract the visitors but are also of great interest and love to see or to go and visit these places let us move ahead so after this this was your neighboring India page number 26 moving ahead we have the different forms of government that is the democracy oligarchy dictatorship anarchy and monarchy apart from this you also have totalitarianism and various others moving ahead in this part so what you can see is that is this democracy this is a type of government in which many peoples are there which together rule the common people oligarchy oligarchy is a form of government in which 
few people rule over the some people or the common peoples or the people belonging to a particular group when we move to the dictatorship in the case of dictatorship this type of government is basically ruled by only one person just like if you can take the example of china okay or you can take some more examples where complete dictatorship is followed Pe government does not listens to the common people does not listens to the people normal people and whatever the decision of the government is there that decision is considered to be final apart from this we have some more different types of governments that is here we have totalitarianism okay totalitarianism is what in this we don't have any central government or a state government in this case the state government has complete control complete control over all the things which are going on inside the state whether we take the religion point of view or we take the economic point of view or the education sector or the family issues or anything or the media or mass or anything that is each and every aspect each and every activities which is going on inside that state will be governed by that state only nobody else other than that state has the power or has the control over this state whatever the state's government decisions would be there that will be considered to be as final all right moving ahead a little bit description about this thing so what you can see here no individual freedom is there that is people does not have any right to do anything by their own okay basically that is the entire decisions or the control the state government has this is also you can consider to be a type of dictatorship only but the difference will be there that it will not be only one person but it will be many moving ahead with this now try to recognize this picture she is the lady who was for, who first became the woman prime minister of the world all right the first woman prime minister of the world she was and she belongs to she was the pm of sri lanka all right on july 1960 Bandaran Naike was sworn as the first female prime minister in the world of Sri Lanka as apart from being the pm that is the prime minister she was also the head or the minister of the defense and the external affairs so this was a record or this was for the first time in history and latest if you remember we have recently a woman prime minister of france or some outer countries all right moving ahead with this now let us move ahead to the next topic that is our science and technology okay when we move ahead to the science and technology so in this case that is your page number 9 let us first discuss about the diseases in this case when we are discussing about the diseases the entire diseases can be grouped or categorized into two parts that is your congenital diseases as well as the acquired diseases acquired diseases can again be further classified into two that is your communicable or non communicable diseases communicable or infectious non communicable or non infectious diseases 
as the name suggests communicable which can be transferred from one person to another and non communicable means what the diseases which cannot be transferred from one person to another let us have a much more detail of these diseases so starting with this if you can see here this is the case of the congenital diseases congenital diseases means what basically these diseases are what they are acquired by the person when the he or she is present inside the mother's womb only that is before the birth of a baby whether it is he or she takes place this diseases they are getting acquired if you can see here the baby who is present inside the mother's womb if the mother's activity that is if the mother takes some contaminated food and water with chemicals and this is taken up by the mother the baby since it is obtaining the nutrients from the mother only the baby also gets the contaminated food and water and thereby starts suffering from the congenital diseases if apart from this if the mother is having some unhealthy lifestyle so in this case also like improper diet or smoking or taking alcohol in this case also the baby gets affected and it starts suffering from one or the other kinds of diseases moving ahead so this is what this is all about the diseases which occur when the baby is present inside the mother's womb only let us move ahead with this part so this is a very common <coughs> example just try to observe these two types of mosquitoes these are your anopheles mosquito and your aedes mosquito which are responsible for causing dengue and malaria all right if you can see the difference in the structure wise as well as in the appearance wise this female part when you will be studying the chapter microorganisms friend and foe in that chapter only you will be studying about this female anopheles mosquito which is responsible for causing your malaria okay as well as the adus one for causing dengue okay so this is the mode of transmission that is how the disease get transferred from a sick person to a healthy person or directly to a healthy person that is whenever these mosquitoes are going to bite us or when we will be bitten by these mosquitoes of course we are going to suffer from malaria or dengue let us move ahead with this let's try to observe this figure and think about the disease which this child would be suffering just think about it i'll be explaining you in detail within few seconds just think about it are you able to recognize it no all right now i am going to tell you so this boy or child is suffering from a disease which is known as measles if you can see the dark brown or the light pink patches which are present on the entire body of this child is due to the disease which is known as measles moving ahead with this okay i hope you are able to recognize this this is basically we are discussing about the vaccination which is being done either the vaccines are being injected into our body with the help of injections or it is taken orally just like your polio vaccine okay 
why vaccination is done vaccination is done so that our body produces antibodies and whenever in the future the disease it might try to enter our body the antibodies will fight against them and will destroy them this also you are going to study in much detail in your microorganisms friend and foe or the second chapter of science all right moving ahead this is last but not the least in this category that is what you can see here is this is basically we are discussing about pathology when we are discussing about pathology always remember pathology is nothing but a place a lab where tests are being performed samples are being checked for a particular disease now don't get confused in pathology and diagnostic centers all right pathology are the labs where your blood samples urine samples are being taken and examined whereas diagnostic centers are those places where your x-ray ultrasound and all these things are being done let us move ahead with our last page of today that is your interesting inventions all right let us see here computer mouse okay this computer mouse was discovered by Doug Engelbert when <coughs> he was discovered this so it was not a very easy task for him he put a lot of effort discovered different types of mouse and that is why if you can see here this one is a USB mouse here is some different kinds of socket is there and today we, we even have the wireless mouse as well all right so now moving on to the second invention if you can see these are the non reflective glasses you can see here half of the glass is polished on one side so what you can see the reflection the non polished side is giving you a much clearer image of the yellow flower but that polished side is not giving you a proper image okay next one we have tin can peter duran was the person who discovered tin can for preservation of the eatable items okay your pickles and all these things as well as various other stuffs food stuffs are being preserved in the tin cans so that they are able to last for a longer period of time without getting infected by the action of the microbes or microorganisms moving towards our last part that is current affairs which is the most important one okay so this is the first one that is our india business council is going to host the 45th india's ideas summit 2020 which will be done by our honorable prime minister who is going to address this summit and this has been already already done on 22nd of july all right so moving ahead towards our second one our former mp governor lalji tandon passed away at the age of 85 he was the governor of mud pradesh okay next we have one nation one card scheme that is each and every individuals will be able to get the food with one card only whether he belongs to up or delhi or anywhere else moving ahead we have four p81 aircrafts are there to arrive in india by 2021 all right so these are all the current affairs for today moving ahead the last part that is this was all for today in the next class we will be going ahead towards our some more pages and interesting facts about the inventions or anything like that till that time i once again request you to stay safe and stay safe healthy and take all the necessary precautions 
to carry out your life activities. That's all for today. Thank you and have a nice day.